Lynn Van Zutphen on Saturday mornings with Neil Humphreys, only on Money FM 89.3. Good morning. Welcome back to Saturday mornings here on Money FM 89.3. Glenn Van Zutphen and Neil Humphreys with you for another hour or so. We are celebrating International Women's Day just a bit early here on the show since it is officially next Tuesday. All day we have been having interesting and impactful women on our show, Neil. And I'm so happy, you know, we always try to have a good gender mix on the show, but today has really been a special show for me. It has indeed. And I have to say... Kudos to you and uh, kudos to our upcoming guests who we're having on the show because I think it's very timely, very pertinent, and I genuinely am honored that she's coming on. A little bit earlier in the show today, uh, we, in our international news review, we talked about the situation in Ukraine and the ongoing uh, fighting there. Just overnight, we've seen uh, news that Russia has seized Europe's biggest nuclear power plant in Ukraine after bombing it, which uh, raised condemnation from countries around the world. We also saw that NATO has voted against uh, imposing a no-fly zone over Ukraine, which means that Russian jets can continue to bomb and missiles can continue to fly, uh, much to the distress, obviously, of Ukrainian officials, including President Zelenko. Who has said it is giving a green light for further bombing of Ukraine. His exact words were, all the people who die from this day forward would also die because of you, because of your weakness, because of your lack of unity. That's where we are. It is our honor and our pleasure now to welcome Her Excellency Katerina Zelenko, the Ukrainian ambassador to Singapore, on to Money FM Saturday mornings. Good morning, Madam Ambassador. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, we are uh, sorry to have you on under these circumstances, but we are certainly happy to uh, get your perspective and the news that you have coming out of Kiev and other parts of your homeland. Tell us what, what is the latest that you have been hearing in recent hours uh, from home? In fact, we are uh, in the 10th day of the full-fledged war in the very heart of Europe, the war instigated by the Russian Federation, which invaded the sovereign country, its neighboring country. Uh, Ukraine keeps standing, keeps resisting. Our armed forces uh, keep uh, struggling against uh, the formidable enemy, one of the most powerful armies in the world. Uh, however, the Russian troops simultaneously attack Ukraine from different directions firing hundreds of crews and operational tactical missiles at military positions and cities, attacking with aviation, tanks and artillery. Uh, Russian army is facing military defeat on the ground, and uh, hence it began indiscriminate shelling of Ukrainian cities with missile strikes and heavy artillery, mm. kindergartens and schools, universities and hospitals. Uh, fuel stations, bridges are targeted. Thousands of Ukrainian civilian citizens were killed and wounded. The situation remains very tense. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely horrific. I mean, uh, your president this morning, President Zelensky, has again criticized NATO for refusing to implement a no-fly zone over Ukraine, saying that people who die from this day forward will die because of the lack of action. What do you want to see now or what do you hope for from the international community? Of course, uh, it is crucial now to provide um, the necessary support and protection to the people on the ground. But at the end of the day, we are speaking not only about Ukraine's security. It is about the security of the whole Europe and of the whole world. Yesterday, we all faced uh, that the entire Europe was put on the brink of nuclear disaster when the mm. Russian troops mm. began shelling the largest in Europe, the Parisian nuclear power station. It was, it was unbelievable. That was unbelievable that they, would, that they would do that. I mean, everybody would lose in that situation, wouldn't they? Yeah, could you imagine? They uh, did not even allow the firefighters to approach the block. Fortunately, at the last moment, we managed to put the fire out. Mm. And uh, the power station was seized by Russia as well as the Chernobyl nuclear power station. Mm. And we see that this is uh, one of the tools Russia is using in order to blackmail the whole world uh, and just put in pressure uh, in order to achieve its goals, which are in fact senseless. Yeah. We're speaking with Her Excellency Katerina Zelenko, the Ukrainian ambassador to Singapore on the latest in Ukraine. Uh, the the strength with which the uh, population has put up a fight, the Ukrainians have put up a fight, has 
uh, perhaps been surprising to many people outside of Ukraine, uh, most notably surprising to the Russian forces there. They were expecting to just walk right in. Um, you know, the people of your country are very strong, but at the same time, we are seeing a humanitarian disaster happening. We've had, you know, over a million people reportedly already flee. 1.2 uh, million now. Yeah, there are, there are orphans, uh, you know, children who without families now, they're either being sent abroad or, or families and parents have been killed and separated. Uh, when you look at this humanitarian disaster beyond the obvious physical destruction of your country, what is the way forward to help? the uh, the refugees now and the people that are indeed trapped inside the country uh, uh to, you know to to survive what's what's going on and what will come probably in in coming days in fact we are dealing with uh, the crimes against humanity here uh and um the situation um, in the humanitarian field is uh, very strenuous many people have lost their hopes mm-hmm. nearly uh, 900,000 Ukrainians were forced to leave Ukraine uh, hundreds of thousands became IDPs. Uh, of course, uh, there were no military purposes to commit these crimes against humanity, but now it is the fact that we need to deal with that, and we expect more active involvement of international organizations in humanitarian aid, including establishment of humanitarian corridors blocked by the Russian troops despite the negotiations, ensuring delivery of humanitarian relief to the medical facilities, and, of course, provision of critical food supply to the civilian population. All cases of violation of the provisions of international and international humanitarian law must be registered. We know that UN Humanitarian has already launched emergency appeals for a combined $1.7 billion to urgently deliver humanitarian support to people inside Ukraine and the refugees in the neighboring countries. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, speaking to military analysts and watching the coverage, it, it, it looks increasingly clear now that Russia did not anticipate this kind of extraordinary resistance from A, the Ukrainian people, and B, President Zelensky, who has really captured international attention. From the outside looking in, we're new to this guy, but you can tell us, what is this man like, President Zelensky? You're probably not surprised at what you're seeing now, as the rest of the world are. What kind of a man is President Zelensky? I think that's uh, what we all call leadership. Because the nation which is now uh, struggling and fighting for its independence and the end of the day for its future needs to feel that there is strong leader behind them. And in fact, uh, President Zelensky contributed to the whole 44 million people uniting uh, across one major goal to protect their future and to fight for their independence. I think Putin made some miscalculations uh, invading Ukraine. First, he underestimated Ukrainian resilience, the resilience uh, of our armed forces, and of course the resilience within the civil society and ordinary people who united as who are now united as never before. Second, he definitely underestimated the strong international response. We all have seen three days ago the unmitigated disaster for the Russian diplomacy and for the Russian leadership uh, during the voting uh, for the United Nations General Assembly resolution, which finally recognized Russia as a global pariah. Uh, unprecedented number of countries voted for the 141 nations voted for this resolution. And, of course, I very much hope that one day I will be able to say that Putin also underestimated the strong resistance within the Russian society. As so many families have already lost their sons in this senseless war, the Russian military has already lost more than 9,000 people in uh, personnel in Ukraine. And it means that 9,000 families lost their sons, their fathers, their loved ones. They may not keep silent about what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, Ambassador, where are you getting that 9,000 number? Because that, that number has you know, it has been disputed. Obviously, the Russians say it's just a few hundred. Uh, we're hearing 9,000 from you. What, what's the source for that 9,000 Russian dead number? This information, this data are being collected by the um, um, uh, special units within the armed forces of Ukraine, mm-hmm. those who fix every casualty on every place. You, you just need to understand that we are dealing now with invasion from all directions. Right. from all parts of Ukraine. So this is uh, actually um, a huge work, which takes uh, arduous hours. 
but we are really trying to collect these numbers. Of course, the Russian Federation, this is an integral part of every war, would hide the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ambassador, we're getting comments coming in, supportive comments from our Singaporean listeners. And one is asking, you know, how can Singaporeans help? I know you attended a, an event last night. You had a standing ovation. What has been the response from Singaporeans? You're based in Singapore. What has been the general response from Singapore about this invasion? In fact, the solidarity of the entire international community in the face of this tragedy constitutes a huge value to Ukraine and the whole uh, European um, community. Speaking about Singapore, I think not only Ukraine, but the whole world admires Singapore's strong response to the blatant violation of the international law and the UN Charter by Russia. Singapore acts in the concert with uh, the whole civilized world and the like-minded country. Uh, to the understanding that in the world where the might is right, no nation can feel safe. And in fact, we are overwhelmed by the messages of support and a request how they can help from the Singaporeans who are really um, ready to support our country at this critical juncture. We have already opened the account uh, in cooperation with the Red Cross Singapore trying to collect donations uh, to support the people on the ground in Ukraine for providing the medical aid and uh, reconstruction of the damaged uh, infrastructure. We could accommodate to two million Singaporean dollars for that and this process is ongoing. We appreciate all this effort. Mm. Uh, I think it is uh, really important now uh, to um, move forward on this path and we call on all the countries across the globe to put more pressure on Russia to stop doing business with this country, to freeze out Russia from the global financial system. We must be clear about the fact that every cent gained by the Russian Federation can be put on the strengthening of its military capacities, which means new deaths, new injuries, new devastation. Yeah. It was uh, truly amazing that Neil alluded to that event last night, the American Chamber of Commerce welcome for the new ambassador, U.S. Ambassador uh, Jonathan Kaplan. Uh, but the, the feeling in the room last night was, was really quite extraordinary. Uh, a long list of ambassadors were there, and they were all politely uh, applauded. But when, when they called out your name, just without hesitation, the entire room of 300 people stood up and applauded. And I, I imagine you're getting a similar uh, response from, from folks as you travel around Singapore and, and talk um, because of the circumstances. Uh, even, you know, yesterday we saw the World Bank president uh, c condemning this and saying that Russia is going to pay a deep price for this going forward in terms of World Bank uh, operations and, uh, and funding. Uh, so everyone is you know, most of the big players globally are on board with Ukraine and standing by you, standing beside you. And yet, mm -hmm. the bombs are still falling. Kids are still dying. You know, people, the streets are filled with rubble and blood. Uh, what, where do we go? You know, the diplomacy route seems to have failed at the moment. Is that the way to push forward when it's clear that Putin has an objective that he is not willing to compromise on achieving? What? Where, from your perspective or the Russian uh, or the uh, Ukrainian foreign ministry's perspective, what could possibly be next that will keep up the pressure enough to resolve this? I think the most important thing is just to stand and to resist now. The longer Ukraine stands, the more exhausted is the enemy. Uh, the Russian army is already bearing losses. They are deoriented, they are uh, demoralized, uh, they are confused. And uh, this is something which is a good thing for the whole Ukrainians, which keep standing, although we are losing our people, we are losing civilians every day. We are losing our critical infrastructure, and there are severe devastation. Yeah. But the only one way which we have is putting pressure and making the price for every aggressive act by Russia unbearable for this country. Mm -hmm. Of course, every war inevitably ends with negotiations. Mm. But it must be based on common sense and be such that a fair solution can be worked out in the interests of the people and the national statehood of Ukraine. But finally, we are we're not only speaking about the security of Ukraine. The whole global security infrastructure has been put as threat. And I think that um, it is the right approach uh, of the President Zelensky who categorically rejects 
any unacceptable conditions and ultimatums for Ukraine. The key issues on the table are a ceasefire and troops and weapons pulled back from Ukraine's territory. But based upon what you've been saying this morning, Ambassador, and what your president has been saying, you seem to believe that Putin will not stop unless he is stopped. Mm. Is that how you feel? Definitely. This is the only one prediction we can make now. We see that uh, um, this country only understands the language of might. We can all remember the several forays, diplomatic forays made to Ukraine um, prior to Russian invasion. All possible diplomatic um, negotiations and meetings on the highest level took place in order to pull Russia back from the brink. Yeah. The country chose the way of war, the, the way of aggression against the neighboring country, which they used to uh, call their brother. And now we see how these so-called peacekeepers are killing our children, yeah. Mm -hmm. our women. And if you just have a look at the pictures, it is heartbreaking. I just saw a couple of days ago the pictures made by made from uh, the Ohmadid. This is the, mm. big, uh, the biggest uh, children's hospital in the center of Kiev, which was hit by the Russian missile. Yeah. And if you look at the pictures where the surgery is being made in the basement of this hospital, mm. on the children with cancer, oxygen-dependent children, who are bleeding from Russian missiles, mm. this is unbelievable. This means that only joint efforts can help. And Ukraine can only feel strong if it gains support with defensive weapons, financial support to keep the economy flowing, the uh, support from the whole world um, with, with the messages and pressure on the Russian Federation that it stops. Mm. At the end of the day, it is also a huge damage to the Russian economy. We now see what is going on in the Russian Federation. Right. The national currency has depreciated. They have lots of problems, and it's only the beginning. Yeah. We're talking with uh, Her Excellency Katerina Zelenko, the Ukrainian ambassador to Singapore. And I know that you have a busy day, and, and we certainly appreciate all the time you have given us uh, here this morning on Saturday mornings on Money FM. Uh, but w one final question to you, and that is, with all of the weapons pouring into Ukraine to support Ukrainians, uh, are you worried that this will, you know, obviously further weaponize the country and it, Ukraine will become sort of a proxy war uh, between Russia and, and the West and, and just be the epicenter of that, um, leading to further, uh, you know, death and destruction versus a moment where it's actually going to clear out uh, or push back the Russians? Uh, in this case, Ukraine would really, you know, could lose quite heavily. Yes, in fact, it is uh, David uh, versus Goliath. But there is no choice. Yeah. I think it is uh, the only one way for us just to survive now, to stand and to do everything in order to defend our families. The defense of the whole country um, begins by the defending of your loved ones, of your family, of your home, of your local community. And that's what is going on now. Thousands of Ukrainians you know, join the so-called uh, territorial defense groups, learning how to provide medical aid. They are volunteering, they are cooking warm food, uh, we're all united. I think one day uh, many books will be written about the contribution made by Ukrainian women to, mm. to this victory because it, not everyone knows that 36,000 women served in the military of Ukraine. Mm. And these women uh, managed to uh, stay strong, to support the army, to volunteer, even to give birth in the basements and in the bomb shelters and watch over their babies. Yeah. I think a much stronger nation is being born this day. We thank you very much for your time today, uh, Ambassador, and, and hope that you will come on in future weeks to talk with us, hopefully to give us good news about progress uh, uh, for Ukraine. Uh, we've been speaking with uh, Katerina Zelenko, the Ukrainian ambassador to Singapore. Uh, thanks for coming on today. And, and uh, despite all this, we hope that International Women's Day uh, again shows the strength of not only yourself and other women in foreign service, but uh, the women of Ukraine as well. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you and good luck.